Okay, salute, 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 salute. So I know everybody been waiting on to hear my opinion on my, uh, you know, afterthoughts, my post thoughts of uh, Terrence Bud Crawford versus the world or versus David Amnesian or versus PVC, you know, trying to do it big for his city, put on for his city put on for the introduction of uh, the BLK Prime and um, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, not going the route of fighting Earl Spence for Undisputed. Um, I'm going to say this. I can't salute that move, but I give it, I give it credit where credit is due. You know what I'm saying? I, I respect that move, even though, even though, okay, even though I still feel like Spence would have, would have beat Bud, and I look at this as chess, and that was a chess move, like, you know what I'm saying, I think Spence and Al Heyman and PBC had the king trapped and almost had him ready to admit defeat. I think his defeat was inevitable. If he would have lost in the business, he would have lost in the boxing ring. But I think what he did was he he had to make a move in order to survive. I know a lot of people don't like the move that he made. I'm not going to say that I like the move that he made because I, myself, like everybody else, wanted to see you know, undisputed at the welterweight division, Errol Spence versus Terrence Bud Crawford, like the final face-off type of best of the best performance. Um, I didn't hold my breath. I didn't hold my breath thinking that that was just going to happen. To me, on the chessboard, Errol Spence, PBC, Al Heyman, they was in the dominant position. I mean, they had, they had this man cornered to where he didn't have too many moves to make. And he made a dope move to survive and to make a come up to make a little bit of a, not a statement, but it was a survival tactic at the same time, you know, it was pros and cons. It was a, I, I think at the end of the day, I always compare that move that he was making like a Viking, a Viking move when the Vikings tried to invade Paris and they got stopped. Um, they, you know what I'm saying, they came up with another plan. Ragnar Lovebrook came up with another plan. It was an extreme plan. Nobody else seen it coming, but he took his boats down the stream. He seen these cliffs where they, they put, put the ropes up on the cliffs, up on the, you know what I'm saying? They created where they could have pulley systems and they pulled all these ships out the water up onto this high cliff. Then they cut down the logs, made rollers, and rolled their ships for, for whatever miles. They they had to put them on their backs and heave ho, and everybody had to pitch in to cut trees and, you know what I'm saying, make a whole new, they trailblazed just to get back to another point where they could go back into the water and make another attempt to invade Paris, which they failed at that too, I believe, in the, in the, uh, in the show, Vikings. But still, it showed that the warrior mentality where... Instead of just admitting defeat, he came up with another plan that nobody else seen coming. And nobody else seen a little BLK Prime stuff coming. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, I respect that move because he put on for his city. The The performance against Avenesia, I think it was okay. I don't think that that type of performance our, our, our opponent will prepare him for Errol Spence, but it did knock some rust off. I kind of blame Kenny Porter for this happening too, because if Kenny Porter wouldn't have threw in that towel and let Terrence Bud Crawford get a knockout on Sean Porter for real, I don't think Terrence Bud Crawford would have felt like he needed a tune-up. Either way, at the end of the day, when I look at the BLK promotions, I was a little bit surprised. I thought it was going to be worse than that. Um, I didn't watch none of the undercards, but just... I think it was because it was Terrence Bud Crawford and it was in Omaha, Nebraska. They had a big turnout as far as uh, at the gate. And um, 
that just looked good. I'm not going to knock that. I can't knock that at all. I felt like, you know, David versus Goliath kind of thing where David was trying to put on for his for his people and his people kind of showed up to support him. And I can't knock that. Um, I think even Blue Blood kind of surprised me a little bit with how professional and how he sounded trying to give his assessment of the fight round by round. Um, so at the end of the day, the fight against Amnesia, that was just to be expected. Um, so I wasn't impressed by the knockout. I wasn't impressed by the performance. I did see some, I could see some rust on Terrence Bud Crawford. Some people saying he made a loss to step. I can't say that first versus Amnesia. You just can't, I can't come up with a conclusion if he lost a step. To me, you know, I always looked at Errol Spence versus Terrence Bud Crawford as a 50-50 fight. So nobody could afford to lose any kind of a step. And I always felt like Errol Spence would come out victorious whether or not, you know what I'm saying, Terrence Bud Crawford was in his perfection mode. If he was prime Terrence Bud Crawford, Errol Spence, I felt like, still would have beat him. And that kind of shifted a little bit here and there. After the accident, I had questions. After Terrence Bud Crawford fought Sean Porter, I had questions. After Errol Spence broke down Jordanus Ugas, I had no questions. And then I'm looking at the whole... Errol Spence versus Jordanus Ugas and Bud versus Avnesian. And, you know, I'm not going to harp on it. I'm not going to stay stuck on that. If they fight, they fight. If they don't, they don't. I really don't change my stance on what I predict what would happen. It is what it is. I would like to see them fight. But at the end of the day, um, you know what I'm saying, to see Errol Spence be successful, uh, survived another car wreck, it seemed like this was minor, but could have been major. And to see Terrence Bud Crawford uh, try to, you know, do something independently. Um, you know, BLK was like his slingshot. I think he tried to put himself in a better position business-wise just in case they do come back to the table to renegotiate. I think that was some of a, somewhat of a strategy to try to put himself on an even playing field with PBC. You know what I'm saying? So I have to respect that because... They had such an advantage point, the momentum of Errol Spence coming off your name is Ugas, him being a bigger pay-per-view star, him having three titles, and and Terrence Bud Crawford was kind of just banking off of his his uh, future Hall of Fame status and his past, what he did in uh, Undisputed at 140. I think it was like this, and he wanted things to be fair. He wanted things to be 50-50, and it just wasn't leveling out to be 50-50. Errol Spence just had an upper hand, and I think this move that he made I know a lot of people don't like it, but I think it still was a respectable move to try to put himself in a better position to be on even uh, playing ground, a fair shot at 50-50 in a fight that is a 50-50 fight, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? That I always kind of edged out for Errol Spence. So that's my opinion. That's my thoughts on it. I still salute and respect, but... Um, BLK Prime, I like to see what they do in the future with Ivan Redcatch. Last time I seen Ivan Redcatch, he was really um, doing boxing bad. He took a blow from uh, Regis Progress and he put on a terrible performance of not being able to continue in that battle. So him fighting against Adrian Broner, I mean, the show must go on. You know what I'm saying? But that's my thoughts. Like I said, I'm not going to knock it. I'm not, I wasn't super impressed by it. Um, it was kind of to be expected, but I do respect it. I do respect it. At the end of the day, that's all that matters. I respect Bud and what he was able to do. And, um, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, even at the end of the day, the Vikings, the Vikings knew when to retreat and they knew when to try to attack when they could uh, regain some kind of advantage point. You know what I'm saying? And this is chess, not checkers. That was somewhat, you might disagree, but in my opinion, that was somewhat of a chess move. It might have been a survival move because he was almost about to get checkmated, but he made a move that nobody seen coming, and he survived to fight another day, make more money, and create more legacy and generational wealth for his family and things like that. So I respect it. Boxing Nocturnal Thoughts. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments below if y'all really disagree. Let me know why. Um, and, uh, you know, saying if you're new to the channel, if you're new to the channel, 
sub to the channel. Got 2023 coming up, man. And, um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, still more boxing to come. Tank versus Hector Garcia. Dynamite. My next video, I'll probably talk about Teofimo Lopez against uh, Sandor Martin. That's it. I'm gone. Bye.